Um, it's an interesting question. How do you define the creative economy? Well, it's a concept which is relatively new. It's only really been around for the past 10, 15 years. But there are older concepts around the cultural economy and the cultural industries, um, which uh, have been around for a while since uh, the 1940s. I think the important thing about the creative industries agenda, which emerged in the UK back in uh, 1999, uh, really, 1997, 99, was that it was something which was quite fresh and something which, something which really started to capture people's imagination because it started talking about culture, about art, about creativity as being something which actually could be an economic force. And it started to look at it in terms of the things which we were creating, things we were producing would be in design, in music, in fashion, those all being things which had a cultural and a creative and an aesthetic purpose but also had a strong economic return attached to them as well. So the concept of the creative economy has really grown out of that creative industries agenda in the UK really, back as I said in 1997 to 1999. And what's emerged is a, a term, the creative economy, which has taken hold now really all the way around the world. Something which has been picked up by the different UN agencies, is used by UNESCO as readily as by WIPO and UNCTAD, those being three of the key agencies of the UN looking at economic development and, and social and cultural issues. And the creative economy is seen now as being a very important sector in terms of the way in which it's going to address some of the inequalities that are there, some of the opportunities that are there in terms of some of the emerging nations, in terms of them being able to find new opportunities to create value, create economic growth and to create jobs. So I think the creative economy in that construct is something which is actually something very positive. So it's all those things which actually utilise human creativity, which allow us as individuals, as communities, to actually create and generate new ideas which are around cultural goods and services. So whether that be fashion or design or music or architecture or video games or film, they're all part of the creative economy. And in that sense, they're all very exciting. The great thing about the creative economy is that really anybody potentially could be part of it because actually creativity is something which is innate within most human beings. Most people have some sort of creative talent. The issue always is whether that creative talent has got the edge to take itself into something which has commercial viability, which has the potential to be seen and actually to be monetized, where people want to have more of it, want to be able to consume it so the value is increased within society. That isn't just about talent. There are lots of very talented people who don't manage to make it in terms of the creative economy. It's also about having a certain amount of business acumen and business understanding. Recognising that actually the skills that you have as a creative individual might not just be enough to give you the edge in a very competitive environment. And that being the case, there are other opportunities. If you can find the right person to work with, then you can make it. But it may be that actually your skills aren't great enough as a creative individual. And what you need to do is to think about other ways of working within the creative sector. So for example, you could do what I do, which is to work as a consultant, looking at it from an economic and development perspective. Or you can do what I used to do, which is be a lawyer and actually work on it and uh, help people in terms of copyright and other contractual issues. There are many, many different ways, not all as boring as being a lawyer or as a consultant, many exciting ways of being involved in the, in the creative industries and not just facing a camera, but being behind the design. I think most countries have the potential to have a strong and very effective creative economy. Uh, one of the most important things is that there is confidence within the market internally amongst people within that society that they want to actually buy the goods and services that the creative sector is producing. They don't necessarily think they have to go overseas to go and find the things that they want. That being said, I think there will always be things which will raise the game and actually find their way into different markets overseas and that creates great opportunity then for people who've got new ideas, fresh ideas, have the talent to be able to work in that sort of way. I think crucially in this 21st century that actually that ability to trade internationally becomes incredibly important. Because increasingly I think communication means that actually the skills, the way in which we uh, see creativity working, 
means that the sorts of relationships we can create between an individual, say here in Brazil, and one of the countries that I come from, the UK, one of the countries that I'm living in at the moment, Argentina, actually those three, three places might well work together. People from those countries might well work together to create something which is new and which is different enough to work in all three very different markets. And then in other markets around the world as well. So the crucial thing I think is that you start to look at the sorts of policies you need to have to actually to support creative businesses in terms of how they go about developing. The supports of policies you have in terms of supporting education and educational development. The sorts of policies you have in terms of supporting culture. And I say policies, and I don't just mean policies in terms of governments. I also mean that in a sense in terms of individuals. What is it you're doing to find out more about what's going on in terms of culture in your society? Are there opportunities for you to invest in a creative business? Are there ways in which you can encourage your kids to find out more about culture and creativity and take that forward as far as their education is concerned? And if you're wealthy, are there different ways in which you can invest? Rather than investing perhaps in stocks and shares directly, are there ways in which you can give back to the community and recognise the remarkable strength of the creative sector is not only in its ability to give a creative and an economic return, but also in terms of its ability to give a social return as well. So I think there are many different ways in which the creative sector and the creative industries can actually contribute towards the development of a society. I think the question of education and the creative economy is one of the great uh, issues that still really has to be addressed. Um, there's a lot of theory in terms of kind of some of the issues that we face, uh, not just here in Brazil, but in many countries around the world. And one of the arguments I've had uh, expounded before now quite often is that actually education in many ways is geared towards the old industries, the old way of in which um, industry worked, manufacturing industry worked, rather than the ways in which we need young people to be thinking today. Because in actual fact, to be effective in this kind of uh, creative economy, the technological economy, the digital economy, however you want to describe it, the knowledge economy. One of the key things you've got to be able to do is to think in different ways, to be able to express yourselves in different ways, to find different and innovative solutions. And quite often the way in which we've been taught, in which, the ways in which we've taught people to think has not been about that, it's about finding the right answer rather than an original answer, um, or taking uh, the right path rather than a path which actually may not get there directly, but somewhere along the line, you actually find something which is really interesting and really useful at some point further down the line. So I would say that uh, there's some rethinking which needs to be done as far as education is concerned. I think it's true at primary level, at secondary level, and at tertiary level. It's one of the reasons that actually coming to a place like this school, I find very exciting because of the different ways in which the school is actually tackling the issues of engaging with young people, engaging with people that want to study around creativity. It's created a different sort of curriculum, a different sort of energy, an ability for people to consume in a way which makes sense to them, so they learn more efficiently and more effectively. What they take in, I think probably sticks, can be adapted more readily to actually the needs and practices that uh, people face. So I would say yes, there are big changes which need to happen, um, but I'm sure that the education system, um, even though it is itself a very big business, is capable of changing and adapting and responding to the needs of the market. I think that for uh, the state system to respond, can sometimes be very challenging because of the different structures that are there, uh, particularly in terms of the public universities, the public school systems, they tend to be uh, uh, structured in a way that uh, major changes have to come from government to be able to allow those sorts of things to happen. I think where, in actual fact, education can change very quickly is in the family home, in terms of the way in which people engage with their children, in terms of the way in which they encourage their children to be able to think about things, to learn about things, to play. Play is incredibly important in terms of creativity. To actually start challenging them to think about the world in a different way. It can be very challenging for parents. The thing about creativity is it is kind of like the genie that's in the bottle. The stopper is there. 
Once you take that stopper out, all of a sudden what you're encouraging somebody to do is to think in different ways, to ask questions, sometimes very difficult questions. And that can be very challenging for societies. But I think unless you're able to do that, unless you're prepared to do that, it's very difficult to imagine being successful as a creative society and as a creative economy. You want to be able to encourage that freedom of thought, that lateral thinking, that ability to question things and find different types of solutions, because that's actually what's needed in the context of the new economy, the new creative economy. Uh, so I think that there are things which can be done at a national level, at a state level, at a city level by government um, to affect the way in which uh, education policy is implemented. There are things which can be done in the private sector undoubtedly in terms of the ways in which private schools and colleges are able to perhaps more quickly shift the way in which they work to be able to respond more effectively to the needs of the creative sector today. And there are certainly things which need to happen also within the home. Okay. And um, what an entrepreneur, entrepreneur? Entrepreneur. Oh, here. Yeah, entrepreneur, sorry. I'm always entrepreneur. Back yeah, yes. that's my name. Yeah, what you're... an entrepreneur needs to search so he can be successful in the creative economy fields? There is no easy solution to being successful okay. as an entrepreneur. Most people start off by setting up a business, and some of those people are artists, some of them are not. Uh, some have, uh, have creative skills which they're using. Some actually decide to work with people who've got creative skills. The key thing is that when you're building a creative business, more often than not you're focused on the creative process. What you need to be able to do is understand that you don't really necessarily have all the skills that you need to have to build a viable business. So you need to be prepared to talk to people, to find out what the things are that you don't know, who knows them, and how you go about working with them and finding new ways of working which can make you more efficient and effective in terms of actually being successful. Because the thing you want to do is to create a business which is sustainable. If you are passionate about what you're doing, then you want to be able to do that rather than have to go and do another job just to be able to keep this thing going. So in the first stage, I think that my first bit of advice is if you're starting out, then recognize there are things that you don't know and go to the people who can tell you and help you to find those things out. And those can be people in your family, in your friends, in other institutions that you might visit. So then there's a third phase, uh, which if you're lucky enough to get to, it's when there are some really difficult questions you have to ask yourself. Because this is a phase when you need to start thinking about real growth as far as the business is concerned. Is this something that you really want? Do you want to see what you're creating finding its way into lots of different environments? If you do want to do that, then you've got to think very carefully about the sort of investment you need to be able to get to that next step. Because with that investment you'll find that actually there'll be lots and lots of things which you start having to give up in terms of ownership. Because as soon as somebody starts to invest money in what you're doing, they want to make sure they've got some sort of sense of being part of it as well, having some sort of ownership as well. So if you're going to do that, you need to really be able to understand what you do as a business as being very separate from being what you do as an individual and indeed as a creative person. So you need to be able to work in those three different ways, as an individual, as a creative individual and also as a business person with the business that you're running. And that can be very difficult, but it is the one point when really you start to operate in an environment where you're not talking about being an artist or a business person. You're actually starting to talk about being an entrepreneur. And the great thing about being an entrepreneur is that you do allow not just the work to go farther out, to meet other people, but also you're able to create jobs for other people as well. So there's a huge potential, not just for sharing your creativity, but also for sharing the ability that you have to generate not just the things which are attractive, that people love, but also the jobs that people need. Nice. How should we... Wait a minute, please. Hi. Good. We are learning. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. You can slap him. I don't mind. <laughs> this is my love. Now you are handsome said, I, no, guy. Actually, no. I think he might enjoy it too much <laughs> if you slapped him. <laughs> oh, my lovely boss. Yeah. Uh, okay. How 
how should he or she manage his own business? Um, I think that the crucial thing is to recognize that, uh, as I said before, that you don't necessarily have the skills uh, that you need to be able to be successful as far as the business is concerned. Uh, and you need to be able to buy some of those skills in to bring some people in who've got the skills that you need. But the crucial thing is, don't just bring somebody in and let them do it. Understand that you need to understand, not the minutiae of what they do, but you've got to be able to look at what they're doing and have a real sense to ensure that what they're doing is actually the right thing for you. They're being fair with you, they're being honest with you. It's something which you've invested a huge amount of your time and energy in. So now is not the time to just turn your back on it and think, oh, I've done with that. Actually, now is the time to be really quite careful and make sure that you are engaged in those areas, even though they aren't your strength. Um, I think then the, uh, the crucial thing to be able to do is to start thinking and strategizing, looking at kind of how you want to go about developing the business further. And that can be a huge amount of fun, but whatever you do, try and keep it as real as possible. Try and keep it as focused as possible. Try and keep it as manageable and deliverable as possible. Because those are the crucial things. Having a strategy is incredibly important. Having a business plan is very important. But it needs to be structured in such a way that you can both deliver on it, but also be ready and nimble and quick enough to be able to see another opportunity, assess it, and decide whether or not that's something which you should be doing, which you've not foreseen, which is something which you should be doing uh, instead. So I think that there are many, many different things that as you go about building a creative business, you need to think about very, very carefully. And I think it's essential that, um, that the private sector and the public sector are able to work together. This is a sector which uh, requires actually a lot of stimulation in different ways. The public sector isn't just, to my mind, about intervening in terms of regulating the, what the private sector does. Actually, there are other ways in which the public sector can intervene to really stimulate what's happening at very, very early stages in terms of the creative economy's development. So, if you look at something like education, education, yes, is about teaching people um, about being creative, about nurturing their creative skills and developing their creative skills. An education system is something which is public investment in that area. It's also public investment, arguably, in terms of developing people with business skills. And it's also actually public investment in terms of pe developing people who've got an understanding of their own culture and actually may be consumers of that culture in the future. So that the creativity which is being generated within a school or a, a college, in actual fact, the students that are around those people who have those creative skills are also potentially the audience of that and very important in that context in terms of development, particularly if you want to be able to really nurture a strong independent sector within your society. And a strong independent sector is incredibly important in terms of developing the creative economy. It's not just about big business. It's about having every single different layer within the business environment. So micro businesses, small businesses, medium sized business businesses, and other big businesses as well. You need to have every level for really, uh, to really allow the creative economy to function as effectively and as efficiently as possible. In terms of other ways in which uh, the state, the public sector and the private sector can work together, there are many different ways. I think one of the crucial areas actually is in terms of incubation, in terms of business startup, in terms of support for business entrepreneurs as well, people who get to the stage where they can start looking at how business grows. The difficulty is actually within the creative sector, often those skills aren't available as readily in terms of people being able to draw down experience. So support is needed to help to nurture that, but it needs to be support which is given in the context of the creative economy. It needs to be support which actually is about understanding how creative people work, because that's one of the most important things. The language of the creative sector is quite different most of the time from the language of business and from the language actually of much of the public sector as well. So there needs to be an ability to negotiate and to uh, translate through those systems as well. And I think that the other thing to understand is that actually, quite often, uh, the private and the public sector can work together very effectively because of the nature of the creative economy. If I give you one example, which is very current, 
and that's uh, to do with a movie which came out just after Christmas, uh, which was directed by Steven Spielberg, called The War Horse. War Horse, in actual fact, is a book written for children over a decade ago by a children's writer from the UK called Michael Morpurgo. And Michael wrote that book originally because he was writing for his publisher. His publisher was looking for the next book for them to publish. And he produced the book. It was published. It was very successful. It's a wonderful novel. It's great for children. And uh, a few years later, uh, somebody at the National Theatre decided that it would be interesting to take that book and create a stage play. Now, the publisher, in actual fact, works in the private sector. It's a private business. But the National Theatre effectively works in the public sector. It's funded through the Arts Council in England. It's funded with public money. And that public money was invested to commission a new piece of writing. Um, it was a, uh, a, a, a new piece of writing for the stage, so adapted from the novel for the stage, for a piece of both uh, acting but also with puppets. And the piece of theatre which was created by the National Theatre was a huge success. And because it was a huge success, it then transferred into the commercial arena, onto the West End stage in London and onto Broadway in New York. And in both places, it was very successful. So it shifted from private to public to private again. And it was whilst it was on stage that it was seen by Steven Spielberg. And the rest, they say, is movie history. Huge success as a movie as well.